And a very, very good morning, everybody, and a warm welcome to our ABSA Cape Epic 2019 route launch. I'm Dan Nicol. Thank you all very much for joining us. Great to see so many familiar faces, so many very long-term supporters, sponsors, friends of the Epic with us here today for what has become an annual fixture on the mountain biking calendar. Uh, there's a theory that with every passing year, each year represents a smaller percentage of your life, and that's why time seems to go by quite so quickly, and possibly why this year seems even faster than last year. Uh, but there is one exception to that rule, because there are eight days during the year when if you're on a mountain bike, time becomes eternity, and every single day takes a very long time to finish. And I suspect there might be one or two of those days to look forward to by the time we finished watching our route launch, which is our main reason for being here today, the chance to see what the Cape Epic team have come up with for 2019, where our route is, what we're going through, and what we have in store. As always, it promises to be demanding, it promises to be exciting, it promises some of the most beautiful riding in the world, and offers us a platform for some of the world's great mountain bikers to do battle over our 2019 race. So lots to look forward to. We've got some terrific people here. Welcome to our, our sponsors. We've got plenty of them. Lovely to have them here. We've got some terrific riders. We have a world champion in the room. That's why there's a certain aura uh, to the audience. A recent under 23 world champion we'll be chatting to just a little later. Uh, a lot of friends of the Epic. Uh, but most importantly, we have our members of the media and it's a very, very big welcome to all of you. Uh, I've got no doubt Kevin will echo this sentiment a little later, but the role that the media plays in spreading the gospel of the epic, of letting people know what's happening in the build-up and through the event is absolutely crucial to its success. It always has been, it always will be, and we're enormously grateful to those of you here today and those of you to continue to support the ABSA Cape Epic. A couple of things to have a look at. You'll see on the screen at the moment our social media handles. Social media, as nobody needs telling, has gone absolutely barking mad over the last few years, and everything channels through it. The Epic is no exception. Uh, and the actual stat for you over the last couple of years, 238% uh, increase in engagement and channeling through social media for the Absa Cape Epic. The message is being spread far and wide, and it is extraordinary how many people have an interest in this particular race, accessing it through the platforms you see on screen now, and how many people are tuning in around the world, uh, Facebook Live and other platforms, to see exactly what the 29 race has in store. So during the course of the day, uh, should you feel uh, so inclined, please do use those tags, use those platforms, and uh, engage with us online. A couple of things as we look back to last year's race. Uh, the one that for me defines this race so clearly, uh, and as I look at the front row, there's somebody, uh, an old friend of mine, who's going to be riding next year, and he might fit into the second group here. Uh, you've got the guys who ride professionally, and then you've got the real heroes for me, the guys who battle it out for so long. Last year, our winners, uh, Yara and Howard, were a touch over 25 hours in total on the race. That's a lot of time to be on a bicycle in one week but it's considerably less than 52 hours on a bicycle, and that was the time for, I wouldn't say slowest, uh, but the guys who spent the most time enjoying the epic over the course of last year. So that's more than double the time, which is a very vivid illustration of not just the diversity of rider out on the course, uh, but just how tough it is and how much our weekend warriors have to go through to get to that finishing line. Uh, we had another great race last year, 52 countries, Georgia and French Polynesia joining the extraordinary collection of nations from around the world to a part of the epic and I have no doubt that in 2019 we will see a similarly diverse collection coming over to enjoy the race to take part in it and to leave with some incredible mountain biking memories and those memories are as a result of the architects of this race uh, it's become more than just a race it's a cultural event it's spread around the world it's inspired other mountain biking events across the planet and it's now the one that everybody wants to come to uh, and that all stems from the race starting as uh, nothing more than an idea and what it's going to now is remarkable as I think we all know, uh, and the man behind it, who's only ridden one, he hasn't told me yet whether or not he's riding next year, uh, we'll find out I'm sure during the course of this morning, uh, but to look ahead to the 2019 race, and as always, some of the new developments and exciting additions to the ABSA Cape Epic, it gives me great pleasure to welcome up on stage, Kevin Vermark. So, can we get the first visual on the screen, please? Can anyone caption that? Or can you imagine what's happening in that scene? Well, I'll tell you. 
Her name is Anita Narula. She's 34 years old, and she's from New Zealand. And she's just finished a three-day race across Australia, three-day mountain bike race across Australia. And at the start of the race, she registered her interest to qualify for the Cape Epic. And at the end of the race, she won her slot into next year's after Cape Epic, and that is her reaction. And the cool thing is, is that it's happening without us. Um, you know, we've had a few of our quali these qualifying races around the world since um, the Cape Epic was bought by Ironman, and we've started rolling out our Epic series. Um, but now it's really got its own momentum. And if you're involved in this event, um, and your logo is associated with this event some, way, some other way, then it's, it's actually getting communicated for you um, without any effort from us here, okay? We've created a phenomenal qualifying system where that sort of scene happens around the world every now and again at a mountain bike race where someone wins an entry, or at least wins a guaranteed entry, into the following year's Apps Cape Epic. I, I rode the Swiss Epic, um, got back last week, my body still thinks I'm riding, I'm still burning calories. <laughs> from uh, the Swiss Epic, even if I'm not really riding a bike anymore. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to see how, how the South African mountain biking is being exported around the rest of the world. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, there were, uh, well, that's me in the Matterhorn, the background. It was an amazing race. And um, there, were, there were more South Africans there than any other nation besides Switzerland. And we had six of our staff that were there, and we had um, two of our suppliers that we work with in, in South Africa, the Cape Epic, that were um, at the Swiss Epic. So it's, a, it's phenomenal to see how the Absa Cape Epic and the brand is extending around the world. Every rider that um, they paid a $10 premium if they wanted to use their race um, at the Swiss Epic to potentially get an entry into the Cape Epic. And uh, that $10 this year went to the Anna Foundation. So we've already got some international riders that are paying a $10 premium in Switzerland to support charities in South Africa. The riders that qualified, they got that um, copper bracelet. There were, there were 12 riders that qualified, and um, you know, the, once again, that Africanness, that Humber Gashler, they got that bracelet um, to show that they qualified. Excuse me. And um, it's, uh, it's just their, their token they'll keep for the rest of their lives, and, but also certainly to show that they're training for next year's Africa Cape Epic. We also were awarded the, the first ever Epic Legend medals. And uh, there's a little known fact that we came across the, the medals of the, everyone that finishes the Tour de France gets. And we thought, wow, that's an amazing medal. We would love to give, I mean, it's a super high quality, heavy, solid medal that goes to every Tour de France finisher. And we thought, quite nice for us to give a, a medal like this to everyone that's done all the races in our Epic series, namely the Pioneer, Swiss Epic, and the Apsa Cape Epic now. Um, and it turns out the guy who makes the Tour de France medals is in Durban. <laughs> so we awarded the first two Epic Legend medals um, to two riders um, that finished the Swiss Epic this year. They're the first ones to ride all three of those ep week, week long Epic Series races. Um, one thing I've realized is that the concept of partnerships is, it really sets the Absa Cape Epic apart. And up front, I want to thank Toko Sun for the hosting us today, and especially for tonight's function at the, the relaunch gala, which uh, hopefully I'll see some of you there again this evening. Um, <clears throat> and then our title sponsor, ABSA. Uh, I really feel that we've, we've come a long way with ABSA as our, as our partner, because you know, when we first had them on, uh, when ABSA first partnered with us, it was, I've said this before, it was inconceivable that ABSA or bank would be associated with mountain biking. Um, now, most of them are, um, but certainly we've traveled a long journey with ABSA. You know, we've had a financial crisis in 2008. Uh, they went from red to blue, blue to red. Um, and now they've got a new logo as well, and they're promoting the concept of Africanacity. And we're proud that ABSA is using us as one of their premium sports events to promote the Africanacity concept. So congrats to ABSA for launching their new brand. But the cool thing is that means we've also got a new logo. So today, for the first time, it's going out around the world. But there you can see that's the new ABSA Cape Epic logo for next year's event. What do you think?
I think it's great, and it was quite nice that they designed the round cog to fit in with our logo as well. So. <laughs> um, tonight's presenting sponsor, or today's presenting sponsor, because after all, today is the, the biggest day for the APSA Cafe besides the actual start of the race itself next year. It's when we announce the route. And that's a key thing um, to our partnership with Land Rover, that we actually couldn't design the amazing routes we have today without the support from Land Rover. So to Tina, thanks for being here today. Thanks for the support. Awesome thing is that we've extended partnerships too. Apps has extended for um, another three years, and Land Rover has also extended for another three years, and they've also got involved in our new, well, the event we've um, bought, the Wine to Wales. So Tina, thank you very much for the support. It's very special to have you here. So we've also extended the partnership with ASOS, it's a, a f another five-year deal, the Swiss-like um, long-term partnerships, so that'll take us to 10 years working together with ASOS. Um, and obviously we've got a brand new design for our leader jersey as well because we've got the new ABSA Cape Epic logo. Then we're proud to also extend or to announce the extension of the partnership with the city of Cape Town. Um, I think the way that Cape Town governance is an example for the country. Um, I think that uh, the engagement that we have with the city of Cape Town is also one that we really hold as very dear to our heart and uh, it re it's really works in terms of our engagement with the public organization. Um, and our relationship with spot tracking, um, it's not a renewal for the Apps Cafe, but it's been an extension to the, the partnership to other events around the world, namely the Swiss Epic and the Pioneer and also the One to Wales, so that the, the um, innovative concept of tracking riders with a satellite return path um, and creating a custom um, interface specifically for mountain biking is something we're practicing and doing over and over again. So we've got three more shots before we get to the Apps Cafe Epic next year. So it's, it's quite exciting to see how that technology is um, being developed. We've got some new partnerships that we're working with. So Hunt uh, Distill worked with us at the UCI World Cup and now they're bringing on board the, um, Hunter's Edge as well as the Niederberg brands into the Apps Cafe Epic for next year. Devil's Peak Brewery, um, it's no secret now, I guess, that uh, the race will be on Devil's Peak and uh, Table Mountain for next year for the prologue. Um, and they've got an iconic um, IPA called the King's Blockhouse, um, and the race will be literally going right past King's Blockhouse on Devil's Peak next year. Plascon has come on board as um, a partner, and the great thing about that is they're going to be making a difference to all the communities through which we pass next year, and they've committed to painting the route in a sense that um, all the communities that, or the community buildings that could do with a, a lick of paint, and it's amazing how much just painting a school building or a, um, or a town hall can actually do to the pride that one has um, in your own community. So that's um, something really nice from Plascon. Then we've got um, a host of partners that have been phenomenal um, support to the race, and I actually want to mention them all, even in, in this context. Um, so I've, I've mentioned um, APSA as a title sponsor. It's, in fact, we're their longest running sports sponsorship. Um, Dimension Data has made a world of difference in the world of cycling in general and also the APSA Cafe Peak. Exaro, the development program, I'll speak a bit more about that later. And then Virgin Active made a world of difference to my life at the APSA Cafe Peak. In addition to everything else you do in being our training um, official gym of the APSA Cafe Peak, you've looked after the kids of, I think, every single person that comes to the APSA Cape Epic, you've really made a difference and made it very much of a family event. And the mixed category has really benefited from your support there. I've mentioned ASOS and Land, Land Rover, Woolworths, Mitis Tires, Oakley, USN, Sokosan, Shikon, Spot Tracking, Amped, Akil Water, Avis, Buff, Devil's Peak, GoPro, Sport Taxis, Sunto, Pickfords, On Running, a Mediclinic, and of course Supersport as our broadcast partner. Thank you very much for the support that we receive from you. So if I consider that today is a, a chance for a report back of what we've been um, doing at the APSA Cape Epic, or the, the world of the APSA Cape Epic, we've had um, two significant events. Um, we acquired the Wine to Wales, so as a company we've now organizing without a doubt the, the two premium um, mountain bike races in South Africa, Apps Cape Epic is obviously the iconic sport uh, premium uh, event brand in the world for mountain biking, but also 
The one to Wales, um, you know, is attracting four and a half thousand South Africans that do it every day. So it's a, uh, so they do the race. So it's a, it's a very broad reach. So it's quite nice the, the way the two um, connect. So we also organised the opening round of the UCI World Cup this year, and that was also a phenomenal thing for our team. And um, the great, you know, our, our purpose for it was always to just to set that to be the, the start of the, the world mountain biking calendar, and it really did deliver that this year. We had literally the, all the world's best in Cape Town and Stellenbosch in the, the week before the, the start of the Cape Epic. Then on the subject of uh, World Cups and World Champs and cross-country racing, Alan, respect, well done. <laughs> It is amazing to see that. I mean, it's been, I think, what is it, um, almost 10 years since that picture went up with another South African in the rainbow stripes, um, certainly in the cross-country discipline. So it's awesome to have you here as well. Well done again. Um, okay, so today is about launching the route, and Land Rover is our um, route partner. And... Uh, one thing I can say, without um, taking away the, the surprise of the route that's going to be announced in a few minutes, it's another easy route, because <laughs> I'm going to ride it next year. <laughs> and obviously, I need to choose, when, uh, choose to ride the race when it's short and easy. No, I'm kidding. But um, I'm going to ride the race next year. And in fact, I'm going to ride it with my, the partner with whom I rode the route um, in Costa Rica 16 years ago. And we've, we've only ridden once since then. Um, he's lived in cities all over. We've never lived in the same city. Um, since we rode Laruta, and um, I've literally only ridden once in the last 16 years together. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, um, but I, I really can't wait. And I, I think the, the two things that I, I'm especially looking forward to is the prologue on um, Table Mountain, because when I rode the race two years ago, we were going to be on Table Mountain, and then with the student um, fees must fall protests, you know, we had to move it. So I ride that every week. It's my training route. A couple of guys in the room join us on our weekly ride, so it's, um, it's going to be very special. And then also the finish at Val de Ville. I think it's great to see how the, the grand finale has grown over the last few years since we've moved it to Val de Ville. I remember how emotional I was when I finished it at um, Mirandal two years ago, so I can only imagine, and I really look forward to that feeling that, of finishing the race in Val de Ville on um, 24th of March next year. Finishing. Okay. Um, then something else that's been, for me, is I'm very proud of in the last 12 months is the growth of the Xaro development jersey and the Xaro um, special jersey category. Um, and the, the training that the, the, the winners have been given at the Bacala Academy in Belgium, you know, it's, it's something that we haven't really advertised too much. But the cool thing is that our partnership with the, the owner of the, the Quick Step Tour de France team, um, he has a, a training academy in Belgium, and the two winners of the Exaro jersey this year, for the second year now, we've sent the winners across to Bacala Academy with the support of the Bacala Foundation. So um, we don't have any representatives, representatives from Exaro here today, but it's something very special that maybe not everyone knows about, and it's um, something we're very proud about, that we're really developing uh, young, historically disadvantaged South African mountain bikers. <coughs> And then um, I'd like to thank all the, the host venues that are here. I mean, once again, we, we can't do it without you, um, the landowners, um, and especially our long-term partners like Val de Ville, UCT, um, Stellenbosch, Stellenbosch University, Oak Valley, Hermanus High School, places that we've, we've come back to over and over again. Um, thank you for supporting us. We really, um, the race wouldn't exist without you. And then finally, to my team that's organized today and the whole, I mean, from this morning to this evening to tomorrow, um, it's a really special team that we work with, and I want to thank you. For those of you that are here this morning, thank you very much for the awesome work you did, Sarah, Shannon, and Jana for these days. Well done. All right, um, that's enough from me. Thanks for your time listening to my lengthy speech, and um, I look forward to hearing more and seeing the route find me. Thank you very, very much indeed, Kevin Vermark. Uh, there's a lot to take out of that. There, uh, there's a brand new logo, which looks terrific. There are extended sponsorships. There are some really cool aspects. I think that Plascon uh, painting the towns we go through is, uh, speaks to what we've done with the Epic for so many years. 
bringing the best out of the communities that we've gone through and trying to leave a legacy more than just one day of lots of bicycles and colorful people uh, and that impact is going to continue even more there uh, and although i haven't seen the route i think we can all now pretty much guarantee it's probably going to be the shortest one ever mostly downhill uh, and rather easy given that mr vermark is going to be back on a bike we look forward to seeing you kevin uh, and a, a rather presumptuous uh, promise to finish so we'll hold you to that uh, and uh, thank you very much you and your team uh, for everything you've done in the last 12 months. It truly really is an event for us all to be enormously proud of. It's also an event that everybody puts so much time and effort into. Looking around, I can see quite a few people in the room uh, who've done the epic in the past and they know what, uh, what it takes to get through it. Uh, and the stories that we tell around the epic each year uh, often relate to uh, some of our celebrity riders or to uh, the big guns, the big names who are gonna be doing their best uh, to find their way onto podiums, to find their way uh, into victories through the course of the epic. But the majority of the riders are very different to those. They're people with everyday stories, people who have to find the time during the week, over the weekends, to train, to get ready, to put in those six months or so of really hard work to ensure that they are ready for the epic. And what we've done this year is we've got three reasonably ordinary people in terms of the greater epic story, but people with extraordinary stories themselves. They've had to do something rather special just to get to the epic or to be part of it. We've put that together. So if you'd like to have a look at the screens, here are three of our epic riders and what they've gone through in order to get ready to be at the start line in 2019. Let's do this, Tanya. It only takes 40 days to start a habit. This is day one. Every early morning from here until the Absa Cape Epic is going to be a little easier. A little step closer to achieving the goal. Come on, Adir. This is for last year, when we let it get the better of us. Remember how that felt. It won't happen again. We'll be better prepared. Your brother is counting on you. Full-time job, full-time families, really happy. I've waited so long to ride the same trails as Barry, Christoph and Carl. Eight years of waiting, now it's my chance to soak up every moment. What motivates you? To get up early? To ride when it's cold? When it's hot? To ride despite the wind or the rain, this is the Upsa Cape Epic. So here we go, you guys are keeping the grandstand. Welcome, hunties. Yep, yep. Do you have oh, what it takes? Yeah, that will be done, Welcome to the Grand Final of the Upsa Cape Epic. Uh, you saw there Tanya, you saw there uh, Nati, and you saw there Rian, uh, and they represent the bulk of the riders in the epic, and they're great stories behind all of them, and if you're looking for a slightly different angle from the media, uh, Tanya is riding there. Tanya's been a mechanic for I think, the last four or five years, and last year she was looking after a Chinese team. One of the riders didn't make it through, the partner got to the end with a lot of help from Tanya, and tongue-in-cheek, the Chinese rider said to Tanya, well, you should be my partner because you can look after all of our bikes, it'll be brilliant, we'll make sure we get to the finish. Lo and behold, a month later, Tanya gets a phone call from the aforementioned Chinese rider, and then are going to be teammates riding in 2019. So she's taken that step up from looking after riders to now being able to ride it herself. Uh, Mr. Sali, marketing manager at MediClinic, so a long-time friend of the race, been involved for many years, last year decided to ride the race for the very first time. And a story that's not unique to the epic, he didn't last very long, uh, just the one-day kidney failure. Couldn't continue with the race. And for most people, that would have been the end of the epic misadventure. But he's come back, he's been training, and he's going to be at the start line in 2019, which is another extraordinary personal journey and shows the perseverance and endurance. Uh, and then Rian there as well. Rian's been trying to do this for, I think, eight or nine years. Uh, he stopped short of camping outside Kevin's front door, but he's done everything he could to try and get into the Absa Cape Epic. And finally, this is the year 2019 that he's going to be doing it. Somebody who, like so many riders, tries really hard to get in, finally made it through. Through, uh, and next year his riding dream has come true. And I think those three encapsulate the spirit of the Absa Cape Epic and the spirit of the riders who make up what is so magical about the Absa Cape Epic. So they're going to be riding, and during the course of it, they'll see a little dust at the start of some of the superstars we have in the front row here as they charge off for the finish line. They'll also be seeing uh, some familiar faces, probably a little later on in the race, guys who are not natural mountain bikers in many cases, some of our larger rugby players, uh, who spend a lot of time getting to know guys a little further back in the field. Uh, and we've got somebody with us here today who's going to be riding again. He's not the biggest rugby player, but he is 
a rugby player. He's got a bit of epic history, and he's going to be joining the race in 2019. He's extremely excited, uh, as are we, to have him with us. It gives me great pleasure to welcome up on stage Mr. Brayton Pulser. Welcome. It's great Thank to you. have you here today. And it's great to have you back on a mountain bike. You are uniformly known as one of the happiest people on the planet. It's very rare you don't see a smile on Brayton Pulse's face. The exception to that rule has been times that I've seen you on a mountain bike where life has proved a little more difficult than running rings around defenders and scoring tries and doing somersaults. Uh, take us back. Was it a, a nine, ten years now that you yeah, had your first well. skirmish with the Epic? <laughs> It's about nine years then. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks to the media for coming as well. Yeah, I mean, you remember, you know, I was suffering literally every second of the 2009 uh, epic, and uh, I think I lost my personality in that first hour of the race. Uh, and I tell you what, it was, I've never ever in my life suffered so much. Uh, obviously, you know, being an ex professional sportsman, I thought I was just going to get on a bicycle and, uh, you know, and finish it. Uh, but I was clearly wrong. Uh, I think my mental state uh, took me through it, uh, and obviously Linus van Onslen, unfortunately, had to crash out of the race because he was pushing me for 10 hours of the day, uh, but I managed to finish it, and uh, after that uh, Cape Epic, I actually stopped cycling, and then I only got into it last year again, and now I'm certainly enjoying it. Now, has it taken that long to forget all the memories of the last epic, or that long to muster up the courage to have another go at the epic? Yeah, I mean, obviously it was a, it was a you know, horrendous experience for me because I was never fit enough to do it. Uh, but I think, as you know, you know, our sportsmen, we got a lot of pride uh, in my mentality to get through the, the mental toughness. Uh, but I was never really fit to, to be able to do it. But Last year, you know, one of my mates just challenged me to do the um, cycle tour and I thought, you know, let me give it a go. And then I actually saw the fun part of cycling <laughs> and now I'm starting to enjoy it. And, and for me now, you know, met so many people throughout cycling. As you know, I've been a keen golfer, but, you know, my golf sticks are catching dust in the, in the garage, which is really, really good for me. But I really love it now. And, and now, you know, when, when cancer approached me um, early in the year, I'm like, this is, this is definitely, I'm going to come back and do it. And that is your motivation. You're riding not just for you, but for an incredible cause. How important is that cause to you? And how's that going to drive you to the finish and completing the race? It, it certainly is really important to me. Uh, thankfully, I haven't been affected by, by cancer. And we all know it's a, it's a horrible disease. Uh, but, you know, I've made some wonderful friends with the volunteers and the people from cancer. Every year we go to Sun City to raise money. Uh, and there, you know, I saw the impact that... Um, this disease can have to people. There's been some beautiful stories, but there's been some horror stories. Uh, and, and I got so close to those people, and I want to do or raise as much money uh, for them, you know, during this time, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do it. Even if I raise like 2,000 rand, you know, that'll make my heart happy. But I understand that it goes to the research and educate people on, on what cancer's about. And, and that's a wonderful you know, opportunity uh, with the EPSA Cape Epic and presenting people to ride for all these wonderful courses. And therefore, you know, I'm back and this time around I'm much fitter than I was then, uh, that, that time ago. And I'm looking forward to the, the wonderful challenge. And like you said, the spirit of this race is just amazing. And, and, and I'm, I'm really excited. I can't wait to go. I can see that, and it's great to see. It's going to disappear by day one, but it's great to see that it's there now. <laughs> uh, last one for you. The, the race has a long and proud history of incorporating the rugby yeah. community. Uh, we tend to see Joel Stransky, who still thinks he's 17, racing in <laughs> in no time at all, and many, many, many hours later, a very grumpy John Smith <laughs> coming over the finish line. Uh, where are you hoping to finish, and, and what sort of rugby rivalry is there going to be next year, do you yeah, think? Yeah, there will be indeed. I mean, as you know, Joel is a, he's a monster on the bicycle. You know, he eat sleep uh, cycling at the moment and, and with Andrew McLean and the guys they they certainly put in a lot of hard work unfortunately I don't have that kind of time I need still need to put bread on the table by way of working you know obviously for super sport but um, I'll put in some work uh, as long as I can beat John Smith I'll be happy <laughs> but uh, again having said that the fun is, is going to be good the rivalry will be great and I'm looking forward to, to meet people again and make some wonderful friends and making great memories as well do you have a confirmed partner yes yes I uh, I got to meet a uh, Last year, a, a, a good uh, cyclist, Johan Kutsia, he's a small guy, he weighs about 40 k's. So uh, <laughs> I picked him because he's a good mechanic, and he will push me up the hills. Sounds like a winning combination. Ladies and gentlemen, Braden Pulser taking part thank in next year's race. Good luck, Brady, and thank you.
So there we go. Brayton Pulser will be one of the very, very familiar faces taking part in next year's race. Uh, and whether they are the celebrities, whether they're the guys in the middle of the field, whether they are uh, superstars up front, uh, a few of whom we'll speak to in just a moment, they're all going to be taking on exactly the same route. Kevin's given us a reasonably good idea of the broader geography of where we will be headed in 2019. Uh, but this is the moment that mountain bikers right around the world wait for every year. What exactly does the ABSA Cape Epic have in store for us for another year? So let's not hold it off any longer. Here is, for the very first time, your official unveiling of the 2019 route. This is the 2019 ABSA Cape Epic route, proudly brought to you by Land Rover. <laughs> From the iconic slopes of Table Mountain to the craggy shoreline of the southern coast, traversing the famous winelands and summiting high mountain passes, the passage to the Absa Cape epic legend is guarded by stern challenges. Eight days, 624 kilometers, and 16,650 meters of climbing. A truly untamed route lies between the prologue at the University of Cape Town and the grand finale at Val de Ville. Rugged mountain trails, bone jarring jewel tracks, windswept gravel roads. And yes, sand will need to be conquered. Memories will be forged during the hours of suffering and seconds of ultimate bliss. Writing one's name into the finisher's book of legend will require scaling more meters of climbing per kilometer than in any Absa Cape epic to date. Do you have what it takes? The Mother City hosts the prologue at the University of Cape Town on the roads and trails of South African National Park's flagship, Table Mountain. Prologue, the Grand Depart. Distance, 21 kilometers. Climbing, 600 meters. The race gets underway with a fast and furious prologue. Fans will gather at Dead Man's Tree, overlooking picturesque Cape Town at the highest point of the stage. From there, riders will weave along the contour tracks towards the infamous Plum Pudding Descent, the race's inaugural Land Rover technical terrain. Steep and dusty Plum Pudding has claimed numerous collarbones in its two previous Absa Cape Epic outings, so exercise caution. Hermanus and its shallow, sheltered bay is world-renowned for fantastic southern right whale watching. The quiet seaside town hosts the first race village for two nights, while its mountainous trails provide the battleground for Stage 1, Heaven and Back to Earth Distance, 112 kilometers Climbing, 2,700 meters Starting and finishing at Hermanas High School the opening marathon day pits the riders against a relentless series of challenges across rugged and ever-climbing terrain in the Hirmel and Arda Valley. The first dimension data hotspot crowns arguably the toughest climb of the stage, Cutcliffe. On the homebound run, the gorge provides the Land Rover technical terrain, a twisting trail cut into the cliff face. Stage 2, Enter Sandman. Distance, 86 kilometers. Climbing, 2,250 meters. A deceptively difficult stage from Hermanus to Oak Valley. If stage 1 did not harden you up, stage 2 certainly will. So take a teaspoon of cement and let a little air out of the tires. The Sandman has returned and we're off to Never Never Land. The machine, a sandy single track cut by motocross tires, provides the day's Land Rover technical terrain. Bram Herricker's six-kilometer-long single-track climb, the Wildekrans Tokolosh,
provides a new portal into the Hottentots Holland Mountains and to Oak Valley beyond. Oak Valley is home for three nights. The race village is situated in the shadow of Hrunanberg, in the heart of world-class orchards. The race fruits in each rider's training labors will be revealed here as the route heads up the fabled Green Mountain. Stage 3. The Emerald Princess. Distance 103 kilometers. Climbing 2,800 meters. Starting and finishing at Oak Valley, this stage would in any other year be the Queen Stage. Punctuated by four major climbs, Neverberg, South Hill, the Mac Daddy, and of course Krunenberg, which has been known to make even the strongest crumble. Rutted tracks make the long ascent of Krunenberg a test of focus and fitness. At the highest point of the race, a dimension data hotspot awaits, followed by a rocky dual track descent and the Land Rover technical terrain climb to Dineg. Stage four, just like clockwork. Distance, 43 kilometers. Climbing, 1,000 meters. The single track field time trial kicks off and concludes at Oak Valley. Racing against the clock, the challenge provided by the trails of stage four should not be underestimated. It promises fun on the vast network of Oak Valley and Paul Kruver single tracks, but each manicured downhill comes with a strenuous climbing penalty. Mountain biking fans can gather at the Paul Kruver Amphitheater, where the route crosses itself on the elevated bridges and wide barrel berms of the bike park, guaranteeing two sightings of each team. The scintillating Fissy's Magic Trail, which descends along a forest track, provides the time trial's Land Rover technical terrain. Teamwork and avoiding fatigue-induced mechanical mishaps will be key to posting a fast time. The second moving day takes riders into the historic Cape Winelands to the student town of Stellenbosch. It is a global mountain biking mecca and our home for two nights. But to get there, riders have to conquer the Queen Stage. Stage 5. Newton's Queen. Distance. 100 kilometers, climbing 2,850 meters. The Queen Stage takes in a massive amount of climbing en route from Oak Valley to Stellenbosch. It also marks the return of an old favorite, the portage down the Hanto Pass. Claiming both a place in mountain biking folklore and world heritage site status, it is a route highlight. Then, it introduces riders to the King's Climb, complete with Dimension Data Hotspot at the summit. It has all the hallmarks of being the king and queen maker of the entire route. Long, brutally steep, it grinds inexorably into the clouds above Somerset West. The Land Rover technical terrain on the Helderberg trails follows and provides a burn-filled blast from the masts into the vineyards. Completing the queen stage is no guarantee of finishing, however. Can you go the distance? Stage 6, Death and Taxes. Distance, 89 kilometers. Climbing, 2,650 meters. Single tracks and vineyard climbs are as much a certainty in Stellenbosch as death and taxes. Starting in the 340-year-old town, a sense of Botmaskop, Simonsburg and Kopmatskop provide calf-crunching climbs. While Skyfall, the technical knick-knack single track and the extensive Simmonsburg trail networks provide downhill thrills to those with the skills and energy reserves to enjoy them. Club Matskop and its oft rocky single tracks is the staging ground for the day's Land Rover technical terrain. Val de Ville, the host of the Champs Elysees of mountain biking, is the epitome of luxury and provides a fitting culmination to the 2019 Absa Cape Epic. Stage 7, the grand finale. Distance, 70 kilometers. Climbing, 
1,800 meters. The last stage takes riders into the famed Yonkers Hook on the route from Stellenbosch to Champagne on the polo fields of Valdovi. In Yonkers Hook, Boslace and Bennett's Red set the scene before Armageddon and its rock wall ride for the brave marks the final Land Rover technical terrain of the race. Thereafter, climbing is on the cards, past Botmaskov and Fierberg to Boschendal and Valdavi for trails worthy of concluding this eight-day untamed African mountain bike race experience. Totaling 624 kilometers with 16,650 meters of climbing through some of the Western Cape's most beautiful mountains and iconic wine farms. This is the 2019 Absa Cape Epic at its picturesque and challenging best. The route has been revealed. The gauntlet has been thrown down. Do you have what it takes? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there is your route for 2019. <laughs> it's quite easy looking at faces to see who's riding it and who's not. <laughs> there we go. Some, uh, some familiar spaces. We're back in Hermanus. It's always a beautiful part of the world. I was there last weekend. It's just lovely uh, to be in Elgin. It's some of the best riding on the planet. Uh, some lovely routes down through into Stellenbosch and that great finish. Uh, quite a lot more climbing than we maybe were anticipating. Uh, I'm not sure if you actually signed off on this, Kevin, before you saw it, but uh, you have a little bit of work to do over the course of next year's Epic, as do all of our riders. It's a beautiful route, some great terrain, some very nice technical stuff uh, to have a crack at, uh, and I think all told, platform set for another superb running of the Absa Cape Epic. Uh, let's get some expert thought on it, though. We've got some terrific mountain bikers in the room, uh, and I'd like to welcome the first two of them up just to have a look at the route and get some thoughts on the Epic as a whole. If I can ask Mariska Strauss to please come and join me. And then our recently crowned under-23 world champion, Alan Hatherley. A very warm welcome to two of our top riders. Thank you, guys. Well, welcome, guys, and great to have you both here. And uh, Mariska, let's get some thoughts from you first, because you know this race uh, better than most. How are you feeling after seeing that? I'm getting some serious flashbacks from this year's epic. <laughs> um, yeah, as you guys know, my epic didn't end the way I wanted it to, but yeah, it's it looks really exciting. Um, I'm quite quite stoked to to see all the towns. Um, all of them are close to my heart. Um, I studied in Stellenbosch. My brother lives in Oak Valley. Um, so yeah, very excited to to explore the trails. I think it might be a bad thing because I know all the shortcuts. <laughs> I was going to ask something similar. Uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of track there, a lot of trails that our South Africans will know well. Uh, is that going to give our local riders a little bit more of an advantage in 2019? Um, yeah, I think so. It's it's always good to to know the trails and know where you're heading, know the terrain. So I think it's a definite advantage to you have to know the route. Uh, we've showcased this route, and I watched a lot of people. I watched one person in particular because I was looking for a flicker in the eyes that said, I really want to ride this next year. What's having a look at that route launch done for you, Alan? Are you uh, starting to feel some uh, some epic intent? Yeah, I mean, uh, at first glance, it's actually quite scary. Um, the, <coughs> the average amount of climbing for each stage is uh, really gnarly. It's all the 2,000 plus meters of climbing. So, yeah, it's going to be tough for, for everyone doing it next year. Um, yeah, for me, I, I don't know yet whether I will be doing it or not. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that that um, TT day in the middle is gone now. I think it's going to make it uh, quite a lot tougher. I think that was sort of you know the recovery day. So yeah, I think it's going to be some good racing next year for sure. Some very tough stages. One slightly shorter space, but it is a, a long week. Uh, at the moment, though, the focus for you, I'm sure, is still taking in what's happened so recently. Uh, talk us through what was a, a landmark event, not just for you, but for South African cycling, and how it felt to stand up on that podium as a world champion. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's still um, unbelievable now, even though it's still uh, settling in. But I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's every mountain biker's dream to become a world champion. And it, it definitely was uh, mine from when I started um, getting really interested in cycling at six years old. Um, obviously, having my parents believe in me and back me on my, my crazy ideas back then when I was, you know, this tall. Um, to have eventually yeah, done it and pulled it off is yeah, unreal and uh, yeah, couldn't be any prouder and happier to be representing South Africa on that stage. We've seen the rise and rise of Alan Hatherley over the last few years. Did you think though that this would be the year when you got that title? Yeah, for sure. I think um, last year's second place to Sam Gaze, I think 12 seconds was sort of you know, the fire in the belly to uh, chase that top step and yeah fortunate enough i got a top step in monson and world cup as well a month before world champs so i knew it was possible going into it so it's just a matter of uh keeping the head on and uh racing smart and pulling it off well we remember the last person to do it was of course a dear friend of the race in burry uh he went on to to win the epic so we're hoping that we'll see you on the race sooner rather than later mariska having had a look at this race what would your advice be to a, a newbie like alan uh, but also to the guys who are going to be riding the race in 2019 uh, who are uh, training hard and are now having their very first look at what's in store um practice climbing <laughs> um no it's yeah you know, work hard do your do your hills um, and yeah, work on that mental toughness because that's what carries you through the race. And it carries you through in particular because you're one of those enormously annoying riders who all seems to be happy and enjoying themselves even when you patently shouldn't be given the, the task at hand. What is it about you that gives you that energy that allows you to keep getting through every day with that smile in place? I think I'm just blessed with a screw loose. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love riding my bike, and yeah, I've been blessed with a ma with with a, with a talent. So yeah, enjoying it and enjoying the ride. You've come oh so close a couple of times now. Is 2019 the year? Fingers crossed. Hopefully everything goes well. All right, and uh, and Alan, when might we know if we've talked you in to taking part next year? Yeah, like I said, it's still um, uncertain for the time being, um, but I'm doing Cape Pioneer Trek now in October as a preparation race for just in case um, Epic does happen, so I get uh, used to eight days of tough racing, but yeah, hopefully I'll know soon, but at, uh, yeah, looking at the route, it, it is uh, interesting and it would be, yeah, it would be awesome to do it, so yeah, let's see what happens. All right, well, we'd love to see you, and ideally it's next year. I'm sure it won't be too long either way before that. We'll be interested to see who's riding alongside you as well. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you both on the bikes. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, thank you for being such a great friend of the Epic, Mariska, and uh, thank you for lighting up South Africa with a wonderful, wonderful performance. Ladies and gentlemen, two great South African athletes, Mariska and Alan, thank you very, very Thanks, much guys. indeed. So we'll be watching Alan's social media feeds very, very closely over the next few months. Over the course of that route unveil, you will have seen a lot of rather demanding territory, our uh, Land Rover technical terrain. Uh, always asks a lot of questions, but also tends to bring the best out of our riders. It's uh, a stretch of riding that once through, you really feel a sense of achievement of having negotiated, even if it was with the occasional cut or bruise. And we've taken one of the stretches from the very first day, Plum Pudding, which I think a lot of you will know rather well. And we've got two fairly familiar faces from life on a mountain bike, uh, giving us some guidance to our Land Rover Technical Terrain Series. Here's a sneak preview of what's in snore from two of the experts. In 2019, the Absa Cape Epic Prologue makes a return to the slopes of Table Mountain. 16 kilometers into the 20 kilometer prologue, riders will reach the first Land Rover technical terrain section down the infamous, the revered Plum Pudding. I'm with my main man, Charles Key, a former Absa African jersey wearer, and uh, my name's Oli Pena Munich. Strap yourselves in. We're looking forward to this. Riders Adrenaline will be pumping as they reach the first Land Rover technical terrain. Plum pudding, let's rock and roll. The first big challenge, this great left-hander, well boomed, so no problems there. Let's get through here. Charlie Boy taking the straight line and uh, it's gonna start getting a bit steeper. Keep your weight neutral, not too far forward and not too far back. Here's where it really gets steep. That little step down, woo! 
cool for the turns. Nice and grippy today. In March, generally very dusty and riders have to make sure they've got eyewear that can uh, save their eyes. Dropper posts, riders with them will really benefit a lot. Brake quite hard here, set yourself up, be calm, you can take right or left there and now we make a big turn to the right and you've safely made it down plum pudding and the Land Rover technical terrain number one successfully completed. Nice one, Charlie boy. Yoo! There we go. Uh, world class commentator of the future and already a world class rider. Uh, and if you watch there, Brayton, if you're watching with, uh, with Ollie and Charles, it's actually quite easy. That's all you have to do to get done the technical stuff. Uh, and congratulations on the camera work. That was all a third bicycle uh, being ridden by Tina from Land Rover, who filmed everything on the way down. <laughs> And captured it brilliantly. Uh, one of the two people who helped us out there uh, was Ollie. Uh, Ollie, if I can ask you to come join me on stage along with Mr. Eric Kleinhans, and uh, let's get some more thoughts on the epic. Warm welcome, guys. Ollie Munich and Eric Kleinhans. Welcome, guys. Lovely to have you both here. That was uh, obviously a lot of fun making and, uh, and a lot of fun to put together. Uh, that technical terrain, it asks a lot of questions of the guys who are just starting out in the mountain biking world. Uh, but for guys at the top of the game, is that the coolest stuff? Is that the most fun to be part of? Uh, yeah, it's uh, something that everyone can kind of uh, get into, and it's a recognizable uh, section. So uh, for the full uh, spectrum of riders, it is a challenge because... Uh, uh, it's just how fast you go. Whether you're a newbie or Brayton, you'll be braking a bit more than us, but uh, it's still riveting. And uh, no matter how fast you go, it's uh, still a challenge. So speed, would that be your key element for people to focus on, especially if they're coming into their, their first epic? I'd say momentum. It's a bit safer. Um, the absolute speed's not as important. It's more just keeping uh, the momentum and keeping going. Often people freak and break very hard, and then it puts them off balance and often unclip, and that's probably the worst thing you can do. So uh, the other element is that everyone focuses on the kind of the length and the training and all that kind of thing, the cardiovascular system. But uh, based on the route we've just uh, experienced, we we as riders need to also focus on our skill set and it makes a huge difference actually practicing your skills and not just your cardiovascular getting your cardiovascular system up and running so that's my advice is train go riding don't just train and it's advice from somebody who's got just a little bit of epic experience and this is your 10th one coming up next year what is it about the epic that keeps you coming back that that gets into the blood and gets under the skin uh, it's the partnership between uh, riders, and uh, I've done two with Eric, and uh, we've uh, been very good friends ever since, and uh, in the couple of months leading up to the event, but, uh, back in 2008. Yeah. Uh, but I think the Epic, uh, being a two-person team, is really what uh, creates the bond, and I've done it with, I've been very fortunate to do it with a few different types of people, and the bond is what uh, keeps me coming back. As it does, Eric, back for another year. I think you're one up there on, uh, on Oliver, whose uh, partner's going to be very happy to have heard all of that. Uh, you've got another one coming up next year. You've had a look at this race. Uh, over the 10 that you've done so far, how does 2019 shape up? Well, <coughs> I guess you have to work on that a bit. <laughs> Uh, well, at this moment, not 100% sure if I will be riding the Cape Epic next year, but I'm sure there will be opportunity along the way to do it. I mean, I'm from Stellenbosch, been living there for quite a while, so to see that in the in the route is, you know, it's it's really special. Um, but I guess every town in the in the Western Cape in this area is always nice for me because it's pretty much my hometown, and to have this race here is is always great. And I think that's the biggest reason that I'm always back. It's just to be part of it. Last year you were probably the single hardest working person, possibly in the history of the Epic. Uh, you were riding with Jeremiah, uh, you were backing up Alban, and you were managing that whole team. How did you manage to do all of that in just one week and, and still perform as well as you did? I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. Definitely the hardest part of the job is to, to manage Jeremiah and to ride with Jeremiah. Um, he doesn't stop talking, so I think that's the, the biggest draining factor from the whole Epic for me. But yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, 
when when it happened, when the opportunity came to be the team manager, it was for me obviously quite special and 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 really nice. You know, it's a little bit of a stimulate the brain, not just the the body and the legs. It was for sure tough. I think I had, like I think most people training for the epic, a 12-hour day. You know, working in the evenings and trying to fit in some training during the day. And yeah, obviously during the event, there's always a little bit of a thing going on. So even after the stage, sometimes you have to sort something out. So it was definitely tough. But at the end of the day, if you if you have to do it and you and you know you have to do it, then you just go on and and you you know tick everything off. We got Ollie's thoughts on that Land Rover technical terrain. You've had a look at some of them there. You know most of it extremely well. For the slightly more nervous rider just starting out an epic expedition, uh, what are your thoughts on negotiating those technical stretches? Well, first of all, I have to agree 100% with, with Ollie. You, we of, you often talk to guys training really hard for the epic, and I always call two factors, you know, um, free minutes. And the one is technical skills, which is probably the most important. You can. Who taught you those? The guy on my right. Me or Ollie? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for sure, if you if you fast on the trails, you just you know you can score half an hour a day. So um, cover your body. Yeah, and then um, yeah, for sure, getting the weight down is the second free factor. You know, just stop eating and then you fast on the climbs. Within reason. You don't want to be too light. I've always found that. <laughs> It also a balance. You might be a bit skewed, but uh, you, you, you need balance in life. This is, people have day jobs and they come in to do the epic. Yeah. You need uh, some balance because if you're too one-sided, then your body will uh, react badly and you, you, you need a little bit of a layer to just keep you uh, warm if it's very cold. Uh, you'd be surprised how much I shiver. But, uh, yeah, wouldn't you say you need a bit of balance too? I mean, you can't be super, super light, otherwise you no, won't no, have enough sure. power. Yeah. No, you need, you need both, but I, I don't think the too skinny is normally a problem for anybody. It's for me. <laughs> uh, last bit of insight from the both of you. There are going to be a lot of people who are watching this online around the world. Uh, they've had a look at it. They might not know this part of the world so far. Uh, for each of you, having seen the route, what's the, the one part of one particular day where you know your breath is going to be taken away, whether it's the views or it's the quality of the ride, what's that one stretch that's just going to be unbelievable next year? The Stellenbosch girls, when we ride through. Hopefully they won't be on holiday. Um, aren't you married? <laughs> We'd like to say hello to Mrs. Munich, who's watching us on camera at the moment oh, while, watching. while packing a seat case. Other than aesthetic attractions of an urban nature, uh, in terms of the actual riding, Mr. Munich? I would say the, the density of single track. For, uh, we've, uh, Eric and I have done a lot of uh, gravel riding, and uh, it's fantastic. But I think uh, for something like the Epic, it's great to have a condensed amount of single track, and I look forward to that. Special moment for you, Eric? I, I think that climb to the to the top of Stellenbosch before you go down on the Queen stage will be will be absolutely amazing. I've I mean I've done the trails there on Helderberg on Helderberg Farm on, on, on the trail network there. And I think coming into Stellenbosch will be for me definitely the top point of this year's Cap Epic. All right. So both going to Stellenbosch just for slightly different reasons. And lots of spectators, and not just the girls, but uh, the route is close to uh, Cape Town and it's uh, it's easily accessible. And uh, that makes mountain biking accessible to the general public. And I think the, the, it's a, it, the route lends itself to supporters, both watching people they know, as well as people who are just interested in the epic as an event. I think it, the, the route really does lend itself. And I, it's amazing having support on route. So from that perspective, I think it's going to be great. I think that's a really important part for our media. We've got some very accessible places in the build-up. Uh, we'll showcase a lot of those vantage points and, and route supporting locations, but this could be as, as well-watched and epic in terms of spectators as we've ever had with some world-class riders. Doing. Hopefully the both of you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for showcasing us the technical terrain, and happy riding, Ollie and Eric. Thank you very, very much indeed. <laughs>
so we know the route. We've had some insight from some of our top riders. Now it is six months or thereabouts to go for us to find out if our field for 29 does indeed have what it takes to get through the untamed Absa Cape Epic and be a finisher for 2019. Most importantly, it goes very close to the Hamelin Island Valley, so some wonderful Pinot Noir and Chardonnay to look forward to in between all of the cycling. In terms of the rest of this morning, uh, please do corner any of our guests should you like to ask some more questions. Uh, we've got the media banner wall up uh, at the back and we'll keep that area nice and quiet for you. Uh, otherwise, outside some drinks, something to eat, please do join us for those uh, and stay on and uh, share some thoughts on what you think of the 2019 route too. All of you have joined us today. Uh, all of our sponsors, thank you very much indeed. All of our friends of the race, our, our top riders, thank you very much indeed. And uh, uh, particularly good to, to have Alan here and making his way back to join us. Thank you and uh, very best of luck to an increasingly nervous looking Brayton Pulsar. Uh, we look forward to seeing your race unfold. Please feel free to stay on. Thank you very much for all your support. Tweet and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter away. And thank you very much for being here. Good morning.